Jamie. And that's Nicole. And today we're going to help you become better material scientists and teach you about the hot topic of lipstick. So, why lipstick, you ask? We've got a couple of reasons. First, lipstick is a $700 million industry in the U.S. alone. And it has been proven recession-proof. Sales actually increase when the economy takes a downturn. For the ladies, you want to know what you're putting on your lips every day. And eating. Yes, eating. Lipstick is the most frequently ingested cosmetic product, for obvious reasons. For the gentlemen, you want it to be classy and know just what products and ingredients will keep you looking fresh with a fresh white collar at the end of a night out with that special someone. Because let's face it, everyone loves a sexy red lip and no one wants to end up like this. Lipstick has been an important part of human culture ever since the ancient Egyptians in 3500 BC. Cleopatra made painting your face famous and used lip paints in bright red colors. This ch uh, channeled to the other ancient Egyptians and they began painting their lips with the red color as well, usually to symbol wealth. Both men and women would paint their lips in this culture. In ancient Greece, only prostitutes paint their lips red, and those not painting their lips red could be prosecuted. In Greece, the lip paints consisted of sheep sweat, spit, wine, crocod and crocodile excrements. In Rome, men and women both painted their lips to, distingu to distinguish their social class, and their lipsticks were dyed with ochre and iron ore. Moving to the Middle Ages, Lipstick and cosmetics in general were very much frowned upon because of the religious society. Wearing any kind of paint on your face was seen to, uh, to be insulting God, and you were considered a reincarnation of Satan. In 1890, we move towards the commercial era of lipstick, where lipstick is now available in the Sears and Robot catalog, for purchase rather than being a homemade product. In the 1900s, it became part of the women's suffrage movement and they wore bright red lips as a symbol of independence. The colors came from crushed inse insects where they excreted the carmine dye and the main ingredients were waxes and oils. However, the lipstick went rancid very quickly and stained everything. 1915 brought the first modern day tube of lipstick, which was sold commercially. The 20s brought waterproof lipstick as well as lip gloss and brought the cosmetics industry of lipstick to the fourth largest in the country after cars, movies, and bootleg liquor. These lipsticks had soap bases and tar dyes, and dark reds were the most popular shades. In the 1930s, during the Great Depression, lipstick sales actually increased, and it was the only industry that left the Depression wealthier than it had come in. Sun protection was also added into the lipsticks, and many different shades were introduced by Elizabeth Arden, giving much more options than the dark reds that had previously only been available. The 1950s brought the Technicolor age for movies and media, and stars like Marilyn Monroe and Elizabeth Taylor made a shiny red lip very popular. Fish scales were also added to lipstick for a, a shimmering effect. The 60s and 70s moved away from the red lipstick color into lighter colors and even some bizarre colors. It was seen as a symbol of femininity and any woman not wearing lipstick was considered to have a mental illness. At this point, additives were also introduced into the lipsticks. Moving towards the 90s, hemp was actually added to the lipsticks to relax the user, as well as moisturizers and various vitamins. Black lipstick was introduced at this point because of the punk movement, and mood-based lipstick was also introduced. The most popular was a matte brown shade, which was made popular by 90s TV shows such as Friends. In 1936, 
the first regulation for cosmetics, the Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act, was passed. Today, the FDA regulates cosmetics in the United States. Today, in the 21st century, we have lots to choose from when it comes to lipstick. Special qualities, but we still have that idea of what is my ideal lipstick. And typically, it's long-lasting, neutral in smell and taste, gives some even coloring, good color, some kind of special effect, and it's indelible and non-greasy. To achieve that, we have a generic formula that most lipsticks are pretty close to. Some dye, titanium dioxide, castor oil, carnauba wax, and emollient, which can be that little extra something, anything from sun protection to glossiness. So, like we just talked about, the formula for lipstick, one of, the, one of the ingredients is castor oil. One of its pros is it gives us a nice glossy look, similar to this picture. You add too much castor oil, you get a lip gloss, it's not even a solid. Um, castor oil comes from castor beans and is also sold on its own. Next we have titanium dioxide. Um, this is a picture of the molecule here. Um, it's really good for coverage, it's easily spread into a thin layer. It also helps with the pigments, you know, reducing those reds into some really great pinks, and also for the general color enhancement. Carnauba wax, another really important ingredient. It's what keeps the lipstick solid um, and not lip gloss. Um, it has a really high melting point, which is not so similar with beeswax, which is why typically we see the carnauba wax. It prevents the lipstick from sweating um, and improves smooth application and makes it more transfer resistant. Like I said, um, makes it moldable, solid. It's composed of fatty acid alcohols, esters, diesters, and hydroxycarboxylic acids. It also provides for this matte finish here um, when you add a little bit extra in that 25% of emollients. Um, it gives this nice finish um, along with a little bit of extra pigment. Mica, another additive, um, gives this really great shimmer that we see here. It's also seen in our shiny toothpastes. Um, it's non-toxic, which is really great. That's why we use it in so much, and it is a metal. Silicone oil is what keeps that lipstick on for about 10 or 12 hours. When you see advertised, it's going to last all day. This is what makes it do it. Uh, silicone oil is one of the main ingredients in Silly Putty. Um, it's a polymerized siloxane, which is pictured here, and provides um, some nice color, as we can see up here, in addition to being long-lasting. Our last really special extra ingredient is 3M Cosmetic Microspheres, which you can see up here. Um, they have some really great advantages and features, which I will let you take a look at. As you can see, there's a lot of great opportunities with this up-and-coming um, material as an additive for lipstick. So we've talked a little bit about the ingredients of lipstick. Now we're going to go into the processing. The first step is a mixture of oils and pigments, which are then run through a mill to even out the coloring. This mixture is then added to a giant vat and mixed together, and then poured into molds. The product is then removed from the mold and chilled. It is then packaged into the containers that we see today via assembly line. And now for a taste of lipstick in today's society. Rimmel London's extreme color, new lasting finish lipstick. Color that turns heads. New Redline Color Burst Lipstick. Impossibly light feel.